you have any idea what it's like to have everybody come to you with their problems and expect you to solve them? <laughs> After Home Improvement, I didn't watch it for years and years, and I still really haven't watched, I can't remember episodes. People say, what about this? And I go, what, which one? <laughs> you know, and I, I really, because when I watched episodes at the time and afterwards, it was work for me because uh, because we sweated over everyone and, and talked so much about it. And, and it was always like, should we do this line or that line? And uh, would this be better or that be better? And, it, you know, so that if I watched an episode too soon afterwards, I'd be like, should have done that one. Why did we do this? We should have done that. Or why am I wearing that outfit? Uh, you know, it was just too hard for me to watch it. I'm so self-critical. I just wanted one night of playing poker with the guys. With the guys. That was it. Well, I think I can give that to you. Just call me Murray. <laughs> there was a period during Home Improvement when they decided only dumb people were watching it. Uh, really, there was this period, There, I think the first couple of years were the best years because they were still assuming that smart ki smart parents watched it with their kids. And then there was a period of time when I started hearing things like, um, oh, we can't use that word, they won't understand it, which I fought like hell. I'd be like, what are you talking about? Of course we'll understand that word. <sighs> so I had to fight that. And, you know, I was kind of feeling that sometimes they were talking down. You know, I think what happened was there was at some point people started thinking, oh, well, they're going to watch Seinfeld. The smart people watch Seinfeld. The dumb people watch us, uh, which was just stupid because we still had smart parents watching us with their kids. And um, and I never wanted to talk down to that audience. And I was still fighting for the show to be about something. And I was still fighting. I was the reality police on that show. Uh, you know, Tim and I both were. We'd be like, you can't have somebody walk out the door, immediately have somebody come in and not have them have just run into the person who walked out. I mean, just stupid things like that. Uh, you know, but also reality within the, because our first directors, John Pasquin and Andy Cadiff, based everything on the show on behavior. And, and, and then that kind of, you know, the writers too. It was our first initial writers taught me so much about story. I'm perfectly happy being married to a man who thinks that PBS is something that women get once a month. What I said was once a month is enough for PBS. The sitcom people, the, the writers, they look they look at the whole process in a totally different way than we do. We are taught as actors, the last thing you want to do is ask for a laugh or think about whether you're going to get a laugh. As soon as you do that, you're going to kill it and you never will. But you've got your writers, they're going, you're not getting the laugh, you need to get the laugh. And you have to like think, I'm not trying to get the laugh, I'm not trying to get the laugh. I want whatever it is I'm trying to get. I want to persuade him to do this. We weren't doing that show based on jokes. We are doing that show based on behavior and based on the life of these people. Well, you know, the suits don't get that. And, and sometimes the comedy writers are freaked out and panicked because they're getting pressure from the suits. Here's a perfect picture for the cover of the album, Grandma and Grandpa on their wedding day. That's your mother and me. <laughs> oh yeah, the church is on fire. <laughs> if you don't leave an original writer on a sitcom or on a show throughout the entire eight years, then you've left no one who really, it's their baby. Everybody else is coming in for the paycheck. You know, they're coming in because oh, I want somebody else's show and I'll create my own show later. But right now I'll just do this one until I can create my own show. So they're not gonna stay all night and rewrite the script from page one, which our original creators did more than once in that first year. If we came in and that script, you know, and Tim and I would go in and talk about it and it was like, none of it's working they went and they stayed up all night and we would come in the next morning and have a page one rewrite that was incredible i mean after a script that was really not working we'd come in and we'd be like our mouths dropping like whole new script a million times better and they and they would just be getting in their cars and going home now somebody who's not an originator is probably not going to do that never did that when we never saw that again you still have some charm left I still have some tricks up my sleeve. <laughs> Elliot and his uh, writing partner, Marley, were the ones that wrote all my episodes. All the Jill-driven episodes were written by those two. So during, at the end of the eighth year, they were going to be leaving 
and they wouldn't be there for that ninth year, which is another reason I didn't want to do the ninth year. In addition to the fact that it was going to be the second year, we wouldn't have Jonathan. We weren't going to have them and and some other people that were leaving the writing room. And, and so it was just like, no, 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 no. I want to have a life. I want to see my kids. And the show is going to be like. You did kind of like walk away from that show. Yes, I did, yeah. because I'd done eight years, and I had a seven-year contract. So did Jonathan. So Jonathan left at the end of his seventh year, but I promised the crew that I would do another year, you know, because they needed it and wanted it. And I said, okay, I'm doing one more year, but I hadn't seen my kids in like five years, because this was an unusual show. Most sitcoms in at that point, like Friends and you know all the other shows, they were doing four day weeks, short four day weeks. And we were still in a five day week, we were still there really long days. Tim and I were the only people that went in and talked about the script every Monday after the script, worked on the script, you know, dealt with the script. Um, we really had long days. Sometimes we didn't start our run throughs until five. And so we're there until seven. You know, I and I lived on the west side, so I'm not getting home to my kids until really late. And once my kids went to nursery school, then they weren't with me all day in the dressing room. And so it was like, I felt like I was never seeing them. I really just felt like if I ever hear the name Jill Taylor again or any of the Taylors again, I'm gonna have to be put in a mental institution. So I need to get out of the show and have a life again and see my children and maybe have a date because I had gotten divorced halfway through, you know, um, like four years in and I had no life. At one point, you know, talking to these producers who told me, well, we're the only reason that you have a career and we're all you've ever done and blah, blah, blah. They gave me, I, uh, I'd have a reality talk from Matt Williams, which was like, you know, I'd already done all these off-Broadway shows. I'd done three other series. And it was like, you were, you'd be nothing without us kind of thing that he said. Oh yeah, yeah, it was really nice. And when I quit Home Improvement, I stopped working. I, I passed by, show uh, a huge show that won <laughs> hundreds of Emmys. I passed by a huge role in that because it was a drama and it was right away. And I had just left Home Improvement and a lot of money for Home Improvement not to be away from my kids. And now there was, was a drama and I knew it was gonna be seven years and I knew it, drama, you're gone even more. I knew I couldn't do that. I wouldn't, it'd be another seven years and never seeing my kids. I had to turn it down. And, and I turned down another sitcom. People don't realize that you can make a choice to wanna to be with your children and not work or have to be because you're the only primary parent there is um, that's really making them first. People, they just kind of think, oh, well, that they must not be in demand or they mustn't. So what am I thinking right now? That you read Madame Bovary for nothing. <laughs> Painful day. <laughs> you are my soulmate. 